I just got into the business class and I can't believe where I'm sitting because this is like super luxurious. It's right at the front of the train and it's only like five seats. It's a whole different thing compared to first class. First class isn't this nice. The business class is like ridiculous. So I feel like I'm in a spaceship. The most luxurious experience on the bullet train. And we got a pillow. Put the pillow back. Go to sleep. What's up guys, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Suzhou, China. Today I'm actually headed back to Shanghai and what I'm doing is I'm taking the bullet train, the fastest and most affordable way to get between Suzhou and Shanghai. It only takes 22 minutes on the bullet train. It goes 350 kilometers per hour, like 270 miles per hour. This is a lot easier than taking a car. If you take a car, it's gonna take you over two hours, so no point in doing that. And there's basically a train every like 20 minutes. Uh, that's, that's the best part about this, it's so connected. There's two different stations here. There's Suzhou Station and Suzhou North. I'm going from Suzhou Station, and I don't know which station I'm going to in Shanghai. There's two stations there as well. I'm just gonna try to get on a, a train that has business class that uh, they have you know, second class, first class, and business class. But some of the trains only have first and second. But I'm trying to go with business class because I really want to experience that and show you guys what business class is all about. And the way it works here is you get in a line, a long queue. If you have a passport, if you're not a Chinese resident, you have to come into the queue with your passport to buy the ticket. You can't go into this automated service because they ask you for like your Chinese uh, identification card. And if you don't have that, obviously you can't buy a ticket. So I have to, you know, get here, get in a line, and buy it and it costs like 128 which is something like almost $20 to go in business class I think it's like 80 to go in first class and like 40 to go in second class but the train is amazing it goes so so fast and unfortunately because it's so fast there's no food on board so what we're gonna do is we're gonna eat inside the train station and yeah let's see what they got there is a business class yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. the 2 p.m. so 2 p.m. to yeah. Uh, yeah. home Hongqing, 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 Shanghai, Hongqing. That's actually where I traveled from coming here. And so there's two stations over there. It's that one, and then there's Shanghai Station. That one's a little farther out, but it's actually closer to where I'm going in terms of my hotel. And uh, yeah, let's do it. So it's one twenty, one twenty-one. So it's like uh, eighteen dollars. Passport always. 203, so I have an hour and five, and then which platform? Uh, I will guide you. Okay, okay, let's go. The reason she was putting me in a special class is because that's the next train. It was like in 14 minutes, and I told her, no, I really want business class. So that one's actually in an hour and six minutes. I actually like that because I have some more time. You know, when you're rushed here, you gotta like run to the train, and if you miss a train, well, you gotta go uh, basically uh, change your ticket, and that's not fun. We're gonna go down, and we're gonna see if we find anything to eat. I'm already hungry, how about you? You hungry, Peter? Now we're entering the arrival terminal. It's a massive tunnel, huge. The tracks are actually on top of us. And once we pass this area, we're gonna see a lot of restaurants. A lot of like big brands, McDonald's, KFC, but they also have some Chinese food. I'm just looking for some noodles, dumplings, something simple to fill me up before the train ride. I got an hour, so we have good time. You actually can't even enter the platform until you have like five minutes left. They won't even open it. This is like a restaurant row. We got Burger King, we have Starbucks, we have KFC, but I'm looking for Chinese and I found a place that they have some bowls, noodle bowls. I think it's the best option. I don't really want to eat any fast food from America. I'm not about that. Or look, fan dumplings. I rather dumplings. Dumplings is good. Let's go dumplings. This place, Fan Dumpling, is like a fast food Chinese restaurant, right? So they have a few different things on the menu, basically like shrimp dumplings, and they also have soups, and they have like some vegetables. What I did is I got a set menu, it cost me 45 yen. So 45 yen, so you're talking about like $8. I got the vegetables with mushrooms, looks amazing. I got a soup, a spicy soup. I think it's like a egg drop soup. I don't know exactly what else is in there, but it looks really good. And then I also got some delicious shrimp dumplings. It looks like, like pot stickers in a way, the shrimp dumplings. Uh, everybody's eating it around me. It looks so good. I'm very excited. I mean, this is a very like fast, quick eat, but it's Chinese. So gotta eat Chinese food, right? All right, so I think I'm gonna start with uh, this. So let me get some of these guys. Let's dive in here. Mm. Cucumber, mushrooms, very light. Mm. Very crunchy cucumber. And this mushroom is actually very like slimy. Mm. Oh, it's good. 
It's different. What I like the most about this area is the vegetables are so fresh. Mmm. So good. It tastes super Chinese, by the way. Like super, super Chinese. I mean, the ingredients they put into this is a soup, really, that changes the whole flavor. I love the combination between the mushrooms and the cucumber. I'm a big mushroom guy. I can eat mushrooms anywhere in the world, so I really like this dish. Oh, I missed it. I dropped it. Mmm. Bam. So right here we got the spoon. Right? Ooh, yeah. Mmm. It's like a very slimy soup. Oh, here we have it. Okay. Pot stickers. Shishi. And here we have the beautiful dumplings. Nice shrimp dumplings. Look very soft. It just came out of there. I mean, it was just steamed. It's super hot. This soup is basically like egg drop soup. A lot of different vegetables in here. There's mushrooms. But it's a very slimy soup. It's not like a soupy soup. It's very like... I guess very watery, right? This is like more like a slime. I like it though. Mm, very refreshing. Lots of herbs. Mm, big mushrooms in here. Oh, it is spicy. But I want to make it more spicy. Just drop that in there. Mix it up a little bit. Mm, the chili flakes are so good. Mm. If you're into spice when you come to China, you'll love it because every time you go sit down somewhere, you can ask for the spice. They'll give you these like nice chili flake sauces. They're more like a thicker, oily sauce. It's not so clear like oil. It's more like dense. Like it's almost like almost like honey in a way. Mm. Oh, it's a great soup. Now on to the main event. Shrimp dumplings. Mm-hmm. Big chunks of crab in there. Very soft dumpling. Mmm, I think this thing needs a little bit of chili. So put a little bit of chili on top. We have some of that spice, make it very pungent. They're very generous with the portions. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So dumplings, they'll fill you up. Between that, the soup and the vegetables. Perfect meal for lunch, or before the train. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pour Where's the soy? Got some soy here. Get some of the chili. Put it in there, right? Perfect. Mix it up. Awesome. So you gotta do, we gotta drown it in that. Let it absorb the soy, get some of the chili. If you want, put a hole so it like really gets in there. And there we go. Mm. I wasn't soy, I was gonna grab. I'm gonna put too many chilies. Give me a little hard. Mmm. Really good though. Right there. What's pretty cool is they're using tiny shrimp, like the ones from the lake around here. Damn, this hot sauce is getting to me. Mmm. It's a lot of dumplings. I've been eating dumplings every day. Like, I've had like easy like 20 a day. I mean, that's what you eat when you come to China. Dumplings, just dumplings, dumplings, dumplings. Wontons, dumplings. Pot stickers. That was a lot of food. 12 dumplings, a soup, vegetables. I mean, a little bit of overkill there for 45 yen, but it was really good. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to find where I can go to the Parchers. It's somewhere around here. Let me see where it says. Yeah, so it says railway departure. So I have to follow that sign. I have to go like upstairs and I have to check in, like go through a big queue because everybody lines up. Uh, it's not like anywhere else in the world where you just go onto the platform, you get, you know, you wait at the platform. No, you have to wait outside the platform. Then, the, you know, you check in and you go through. Once you're finished eating, go upstairs. And then up here is the rail transit area. And then in here, We'll find you know our platform and we had to wait and check in. So hard to travel with these bags. Oh. All right, here we go. Here we go. Railway arrivals, railway departures. It's so complicated here, and the biggest issue in China is that no one speaks English. It's really, really difficult. North ticket office. There's no sign that says departures. You have to look for waiting hall. Waiting hall. So you go through waiting hall. It says here that you have to show your ticket and your ID. So have your passport ready. Have your ticket ready. And then go through this gate. They're going to check everything. They're going to check your bags. You have to put it through like a... You have to put it through a machine so they can check your bag. Hello. Hello. Yeah. 
Sushi. Sushi. Okay, we made it through. That was uh, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. They check really fast. You have to store your luggage through the machine. You get through quick. That's it. And then right in front of us, we have something that tells you exactly where you're going. So we are going we're looking for G7131. So there it is. And that's 1B. So we have to go to 1B. 1B is up this way. Right there. Check in. Right here. They let us in about 10 minutes before departure. I'm like running to the very end because I'm in cart 16, which is business class, the very last one. So I have to get all the way to the end of this and just wait. Yeah, I mean, no, it actually leaves in seven minutes. So they give us like no time. I mean, they don't want you to be staying around here. Plus, they, you know, they don't want an accident to happen. It's too many people. You know, you can fall into the car and the, the train comes in pretty hot. So, you know, obviously it's a bullet train. And this is a massive station. You can see a huge station. Really, really big. I haven't seen a station this big. This is like massive. Japan, it's big, but not like this. Not that the ceiling is this high. It's like six or seven stories high ceilings, so 70 feet plus. This is pretty fast. The train in front of us came, it stayed two minutes, everybody got on, and then it left. So they give you no time. So literally you have to get here, stand in line. You can see that's the line for, for the business class car 16, which is the very front. We get on, we have like no time. We get on, put our stuff down and sit, and that's it, go. Yep. Business class. Hello. I just got into the business class and I can't believe where I'm sitting because this is like super luxurious. It's right at the front of the train and it's only like five seats. It's completely packed and we have a lot of space. We have these super comfortable chairs. It's a whole different thing compared to first class. First class isn't this nice. And first class is actually really packed right now. Business class is like ridiculous. So I feel like I'm in a spaceship. And the lady came, she gave me some water and a little snack, right? But yeah. I mean, the only thing with business class is that it's certain trains daily. It's not like every single train has business class. So if you're looking for business class, you have to look at the, the you know, the times and see what business class there is. And it's the most expensive. I mean, it was 120, so it's basically what, like uh, 20 bucks, not bad, $20 to get from here to there. And basically you're paying a dollar per minute because it's only 22 minutes. But yeah, this is awesome. And huge seat, let me recline it. Let me recline it right, right here. Oh yeah, it's turning into a bed now. This is so cool. I feel like I'm on business class, like in an airplane. See, if this was like three, four, five hours, it'd be so worth it because then you go forever and this is like, oh my God. <laughs> this is awesome, like laying down. The most luxurious experience on the bullet train. And we gotta pull, put the pillow back, go to sleep. I need that water. really pretty place. A really, really 
love China. China is <laughs> so cool. Food's amazing. People are really nice. The only problem I've been having here is the, you know, being lost in translation. Like, people don't really speak English here. I mean, you really have to find, like, somebody who does speak English to, like, take you around. That's the best thing I would say. Like, if you come to China, definitely try to find either a friend or a guide. You know, that's that's the best thing. And guides, they're, they're not cheap. I mean, a guide for an entire day, eight plus hours, is probably, like, 100 US dollars. So, not cheap. And that doesn't count for food or anything else, you know? So, yeah. I mean, not a cheap place at all but definitely worth it and that's it only a 22 minute ride what an experience that was so quick this one's actually faster than the last one for some reason in business class to give you a little more help you know to help you out thank you so much bye -bye. Shishie, Shishie. as i said before there's two railway stations here in shanghai shanghai station and shanghai Hongqiu station and now the reason i came to this one is because it's closer to the hotel i'm going to but it's really west of the city it takes about 30 minutes from people square to get here and the other one shanghai station takes about 15 so it's actually closer to the city center but where i'm going to is actually closer to this one it was a little easier it was a little closer in terms of the dd ride i looked it up and it said it's like it's a 15 minute drive instead of like a 25 minute drive so i said why not just go to this one it's not a big deal now we're going to do is we're going to exit the station get on the dd app which is the uber of china get our dd and go to the hotel there's so many people in this station this station is like it's a sea of people if you look around easy to like i don't know 50,000 people it just doesn't end the amount of people here is ridiculous it's like this in china though it's like it's always like overflowing with people it feels like we're like with ants no that way that way okay okay all right so that was super incorrect i got to the end of the taxi line and the dd app shows it in a different location and just man so hard that people can't help me this is really difficult um you know it's it's just frustrating it's frustrating that i can't ask for help if i need to can't ask for help when i really need it I'm just gonna walk out of here and hopefully i can find my way wish me luck wow this has been such a mission i mean i just exited and then i put my location i, I canceled my thing i put my new location and i'm here under and basically it's a lot of people waiting for their dd rides right and luckily the DD app translates for you. So you write whatever you want in English and it'll translate it into Mandarin. So and he, he writes me in Mandarin and it translates into English. So he told me the plate number is this, 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 this. So I gotta look for that. I just gotta literally stand here and look for the plate number. You said gold, gold car, not gold. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> he said gold car and it's like silver. It's okay, we're in, we're in. Wow, that was crazy. We waited like 15 minutes there. A lot of people, a lot of cars. It's like a mix between like DD drivers and other people picking like picking up their families. <sighs> wow. All right. So we have like a what is it like a 20 minute drive? 20 minute drive to the hotel, a little less, but uh, it's good. And I'm super excited because I'm staying at the Pulley Resort and Spa Hotel for the next two nights. And the reason I'm staying there is because I'm working with Bernal. I'm doing a video with them, like a design studio video. I'm very excited about that as well. And yeah, we had an amazing day today. We went from Suzhou Station all the way over here on the bullet train business class. Business class was amazing. It was like a spaceship. Oh, but before that, we had some delicious food. We ate some shrimp dumplings, you know, an incredible soup, like a slimy soup, like with egg drop, vegetables. And we also had some vegetables on the side with some mushrooms. And getting around is a little insane. You get lost in translation there at the station, but it's fine. I mean, once you get in, you're good. And business class, like I said, I mean, it's like a spaceship. Ship. It's super futuristic. Only five seats. You know, they give you some food, like some snacks. They give you water. You get sandals. You get a blanket. And if you want to ride the business class on the bullet train between these two cities, there's only a few per day. There's always first and second, but there's only a few times a day that they have business first and second. And it's a must do experience. I mean, really cool. I did first class on the way over there. I did business class on the way back. Obviously, business class is way better. <laughs> I mean, huge window. The only thing I wish is that it wasn't 22 minutes. I wish it was like two or three hours so i could have really enjoyed it but it's all good well guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content i'll see you in the next travel food adventure in china peace